All right. Well, May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and we're going outside more. We're in the sun. We're gardening. We're at the beach. We're at the pool. But we have to take care of our skin. So if you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Scan FYI. Yeah, May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. And my guest today is a dermatologist, and that is uh, Dr. Robin Ashinoff. So Dr. Ashinoff, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for inviting me. But you know, the very first thing you said, uh, May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, but we do have 11 other months of the year to be aware, right? That is true. And the best way to protect your skin is to do it every day of the year even when you don't think you're being exposed, even when it's raining out, even when it's cloudy, there are still UV rays that are penetrating and it's cumulative damage that uh, is, is the most dangerous over a course of a lifetime. And so it's never too late to start protecting your skin. Um, and I tell my patients every day of the year, they should be putting sunscreen on exposed areas even if they don't think they are lying in the sun. Because if you take a walk across the street during daylight, unless you live under a rock, um, you stone. are exposed. So I, I feel like a lot of people feel, well, I'm going to the beach, I'm going to the pool, so now I got to slather myself. But you're really saying you're, you're, you're uh, maybe you're playing tennis, maybe you're just taking a walk, maybe you're doing some gardening and you're, you're, you're wearing something sleeveless, let's say. You should be wearing sun protection for all of that. Either wearing some sort of cream, lotion, or protective clothing. Um, and it's a lot easier now to buy SPF rated clothing if you don't like wearing sunscreen on your body. Um, certainly gardening, playing golf, playing tennis, running, bicycling, pickleball, um, you're all outside. You don't realize it, especially now when it's cooler, uh, people don't realize they're getting more UVA at this time of year um, because they feel cool they don't think they're being burnt. And so these are the times right. of year we're seeing the worst sunburns. And people, because they're staying out, because they're not that hot. You know, that's that's a very good point. I really never thought about that until you said that. And it's true. You're sitting outside. It's nice and cool and breezy. The sun is still shining on you. Correct. Correct. So what would you, what do you suggest as far as protection what are some of the best things we can do when we're when we're thinking about putting something on our face, our arms, et cetera? So don't ever deliberately sunbathe. That's that's the number one rule. If you are going to be in a situation where you're going to be spending a lot of time outdoors, put a sunscreen on that's broad spectrum, that's at least 30 SPF or higher. Um Reapply it if you're perspiring heavily or if you swim. Right. Um, if you do not like, again, backs of the hands. If you're someone who plays golf, uh, you don't like putting sunscreen on your hands, then wear gloves. Wear gloves, yeah. Um, so those are the best things you can do. Examine your own skin once a month. People know their own skin better than anybody else does. Um, anything that changes and uh, change in texture, change in size, a new mole, something that bleeds that is persistent for several weeks is not normal. Now, you also said that um, it would not be unusual to get some kind of a skin cancer situation in a place that didn't have direct exposure to the sun. And I Correct. think a lot of people don't realize that. So not all skin cancer occurs in sun exposed areas. Certainly the nose is the number one area. The right. face in general is the number one area. If a man is bald, <laughs> we will get it on the scalp. Um, men get it on their ears because they tend to wear their hair more shortly cropped. They also tend to get more squamous cells than women on their lower lips because they don't wear lipstick. 
Um, so all of these things are true, but you can help to protect yourself because there are lip balms that have SPF. You can wear a hat yes. with a brim. Yes. Um, and if you're unsure at all, then you go to a doctor. And, you know, I, I do notice now more and more people who are outside and where I live, there's a pool and I'm noticing more and more people are where men and women are wearing those long sleeved, those, um, I, I don't know exactly what you call them, but it's clothing. They're that... FDF rated clothing. Okay. Um, they're usually 50 and they're, the fabric actually has been rated and tested and usually they're, um, water they're meant to go into water they dry quickly um and it's what people put on their children so they're using the same stuff they use in their children uh they've made for adults so is that is that to, now of course any part of you that's not being covered like still your face and possibly your legs you, you still need to use sunscreen Correct. But is when you're wearing this fabric that is in place of any kind of sunscreen? Well, it's probably better for people to put it on. But if they're not going to put sunscreen on, certainly the protective clothing um, probably is better than putting on a sunscreen alone. Okay. All right. So that, that's important to know. And I know it's readily available at this point. Yes. So what are the things you need to look for on your skin to really take notice that something isn't right? Uh, anything, again, uh, it could be a bump, a new bump, a new scaly area, an area that bleeds occasionally, but heals over, could be a mold, uh, a beauty mark that looks like it's changed or it's grown in size. Um, any of the above could be, it could be a new lump, a new bump. So the key is, is if you're unsure or it's new or changing, then go get it evaluated. Yeah, well, that makes the most sense because it isn't just one thing to look for, obviously. Now, who are the people that are most prone uh, to skin cancer, if there is such a thing? So people who, of course, who are fair skinned, Light eyes have the least pigment in their skin are the most susceptible. People with a family history, mm -hmm. there is a genetic component. Uh, people who may have a lot of moles or beauty marks may be at increased risk. Uh, people who have occupations that put them in the sun a lot. Right. Uh, construction workers, uh, sometimes firefighters, um, uh, outdoor workers may be at increased risk. People who have sunbathed, smokers have a higher risk of skin cancer. Um, lifeguards, uh, fishermen, people with boats, uh, golfers, uh, people who ride bicycles, uh, a lot of people who do outdoor skiers have a higher risk. So it's certainly not a question of don't don't go outdoors. It's a question of if you go outdoors, you need to properly protect your skin. Yes. That's, I'm not that's... telling anybody to not enjoy themselves, but just be right. smart about it. Yeah, well, that's, that's the whole thing, to be smart about it. So what are some treatment options that uh, people are doing these days? I don't know. Is there anything new or different? Well, the standard for a, a skin cancer is surgical excision. That's the standard of care. Uh, Mohs surgery is a type of surgery that we do in the office um, for higher risk lesions, especially those on the head and neck area. Um, some of them are amenable to burning and scraping, curatage and electrodesiccation. Uh, Radiation is an option for uh, cancers that people don't want to have surgery. Um, areas such as around the eye where you <clears throat> may have a large reconstruction or someone's very elderly and they 
uh, don't want to go undergo surgery, then radiation right. might be uh, an option for them. So those are the sort of the standard of care treatments. For advanced skin cancers, uh, there may be systemic therapy, immunotherapy that is now available. So obviously to find out what is the best treatment for you, you need to see your doctor and make you a choice that a way. Discussion. Exactly. So, you know, what do you want to say to people listening that have young children, grandchildren that are going to the beach, going to the pool? Because I, I feel like this is something that happens in people that are a little bit older, not in five and six year olds. But the foundations of the skin cancer yes. start in in childhood and are additive uh throughout your life so the best thing you could do is protect your children your grandchildren so that um they don't accumulate all the sun damage that you may have accumulated there's better sunscreens we know more and that is why it's easier now to protect them so if you're at the pool or you're at the beach and you do put a uh, lotion on you, SPF 30 at least, so how often should you replenish that? Even if you don't go in the water, but you're sweating, you're in the hot sun. Every two, with, uh, within every two hours. Okay. So that's good. I'm, I'm taking notes for myself. Okay. Good to know that. All right. Any, you know, tell me any last words, you, you know, words of wisdom for the people listening out there to really take note of um, what I tell people is if you are getting a tan, then you've damaged your skin. So that okay. is not protective. So if you're getting red and you're getting, even if you're getting tan without getting red, you've still damaged your skin. All right. That, so that's, you know, enough of this thing with when I'm tan, I look healthy, no. right? Exactly. Get out of the bottle. Oh, okay. And there you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Ashinoff, I appreciate you being here today and I thank you for your words of wisdom. Remember everyone out there, May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, but of course there are 12 months a year that you need to be protecting your skin. We will put Dr. Ashinoff's contact info in the description. And remember, if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr. We'll see you next time on Scan FYI. Bye everyone. <laughs>